Let's get into how you made the move from mainstream acting into adult acting. Yeah. So actually, um, I was on a more behind the scenes role because I was in a an administrative full time role before I jumped into porn. But I would dabble every now and again with acting, um, particularly when the organization I was working with would need actors um, to come in. So we had a really unique program where we'd go into maximum security prisons. These were men's prisons, um, and teach them how to write scripts. So, wow, um, that's very specific. Yeah. So there's so much that you can learn, like a lot of their, um, their language skills and their writing skills just aren't fully developed. Um, so it's just a matter of, um, preparing them for job interviews with their writing skills, um, their public speaking skills, the acting and hearing their words out loud. And also like just revisiting their, their trauma through their life and being able to write a new ending and kind of like be lighthearted and not everything has to be so serious in prison. So, so yeah, it was really special to be involved with something like that. And I, my last acting job before porn was in a maximum security men's prison. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what was it like going into the prison? Like, tell me about the protocol, like getting in, like, what were the people like? Were there any like inspirational stories, any scary moments? It's a pretty intense process. You know, they have to like screen you and background check you and everything like that. And um, when you're going in, you have to like sign paperwork that says like they don't negotiate for hostages and things like that. Oh, and that shit. like incentivizes them not to take hostages. Right. So, you know. Wow. So it's kind of intense so like that. So basically if someone grabs you, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. You, you, no you live there save now. You. Yeah. But other than that, I'd say that everyone was pretty kind and respectful and very much on their best behavior in terms of like this program is like a privilege for them. Yeah. So they would they be, probably have to work their way to be able to get into the program, yes, right? Like not exactly. everyone they have to be in like Achieve a certain level of good behavior or something. Yes, exactly. So it was really, really fun to get some of them. Like I think about this one play that they wrote um, where they were so hyper specific. It was a play about like drug use and about like the myriad reasons that would lead someone to start using drugs. And it's a really beautiful play because it, you know, really destigmatizes the type of people who use drugs. Um, but they were very specific about wanting uh, a song during the play that was um Rocking That Shit by The Dream. And I was so funny because I was listening to that on the car. It's like an early 2000s, like R&B, like throwback. But in terms of, uh, this was only a few years ago that, you know, they're writing this play and this song's like 20 years old at this point, but yeah. they've been incarcerated in a while. So it's like, yeah. but they wanted that song. And so I was listening to that star in the song in the car on the way here and just thinking about the guys and like, wow, she rocking that shit. Wow. <laughs> okay, so... So take me through the process a little bit. Okay, so they wrote a play. Yeah. Did they all write a play collaboratively? Collaboratively, did one person write it and other people? Yeah, they'd work together in? to write scripts. You know, it was depending on their capacity. Sometimes they'd work in pairs. You know, someone who was a really strong writer with someone who was a not a strong writer, but mm -hmm. someone who had a lot of fun ideas that they wanted to bounce off of each other. Working in groups was harder, but something that. We had them do anyways. I mean, it's good social skills if you're going to... So I'm assuming this is like, these are guys that are going to get out at some point, right? Hopefully. No. No? Maximum security, level four. Okay. Like, these are these are lifers. So then how like, is it are... going to help them with a job interview if they can't... Well, so, some of them might. Some okay. of them might. In terms of um, the specifics of like this facility is like a lot of people are in protective custody. So maybe they were involved with gangs or something like that, or maybe they snitched on someone. Um, so, and also some of those are just some of the most serious offenders that are in there for life. So mm -hmm. some of them will get out. Right. Not all of them. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so in, in those cases, then it's more like kind of writing out your trauma, finding a way to process what you're going through and that kind of thing. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the argument is also that just because you're incarcerated doesn't mean that you're not still, you know, a human with humanity and, you know, skills that you could offer to society just by, you know, being a good human and, you know, processing what you've been through and, you know, sharing creativity and knowledge and learning, you know, there's still ways that they can have a positive impact on society, even if they're, you know, going to be incarcerated forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so this play, um, so are there, act, I'm assuming there's people that are acting in it, right? Yeah, so the inmates would act, so and then they'd bring in other professional actors. So I was one of the professional actors that they brought in, but I'd be acting alongside incarcerated individuals. 
Oh, right, because, of course, like, they can't, there are no female prisoners. And now it's a men's prison, right, so they'd so. bring in a couple females, but, you know, we'd have to gender bend a little bit. Right, right. Yeah. Did you ever, I mean, so these are men that don't generally get to interact with women on a regular basis. Exactly. How was that for you? Did you ever feel, like, unsafe a little bit? Like, like what was that vibe? So I'd say that there was definitely a vibe in terms mm-hmm. of, like, the vibe of, oh, my God, I don't know when I'm going to get to talk to a woman again sometimes. Yeah. But it was actually my work going in there was actually one of the reasons I decided that I was going to take the leap and start doing porn um, because we had a a channel on the television that uh, at the at the facility at the prison that ran twenty four seven eventually because we had done so many plays and they would record them and they'd just run them twenty four seven on this channel and then I had the thought. And I was like, how many of these have I been in? And I was like, how how many times do my plays, like, how many times a day am I on that TV? And then I was just thinking statistically that I was like, oh, my God, like, they don't, sometimes they have things to masturbate to, but probably not. Like, I was thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, like, they haven't seen a woman, like, one of the younger of the people who are going in. I was just, like, realizing, I was like, there must be so many incarcerated men masturbating to me. Um. Which I don't know if that's true or not. Like, I I could never really know. Probably pretty likely. Probably pretty likely. And that, like, thought made me be like, oh, well, if there's a large group of guys that are masturbating to me, like, I'd like to, you know. I'd like to to expand that, maybe? Yeah. Bring that to the world. Well, I was just realizing, I was like, damn, like, I'm never going to get compensated for that. All those orgasms, like, they are just like... (laughs) Just locked and loaded, like and good. Hopefully, I hope that's the case. But, but yeah. So I was kind of like, let's let's expand the market. Like, let's. That, reach out. It made me feel comfortable with the idea of men masturbating to me. Basically, wow, that is like such a workaround. Like I've n- <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. That like, wow, that is so interesting. So that got you to thinking that you might. I mean. I feel like you must have already had some ideas about working in porn, right? Like they couldn't have like just sprung out of nowhere from this, correct? No, no. I thought about it for a long time, but I really took seriously how long I thought about it because um, I didn't know if I'd want to have some sort of serious acting career someday. So, you know, when I was broken 18 in college, when camming first became a thing, I was just kind of like telling my boyfriend at the time, I was like, we could make some money. People could watch us fuck. Um, but I didn't do it, you know? And I, you know, sat on my hands and I was a very good girl throughout my 20s and had my big girl job and did the big girl things. And at a certain point, I was just like, I'm over it. Like, no. But you really thought about it. I mean, are you, do you feel that that was the right move to wait as long as you did? Absolutely. Or do you wish you had gotten in earlier? Um. I do, and I, you know, I'm really grateful that I was able to learn so much about myself without having an audience for that, because I was able to grow and make mistakes and be a messy human, and I, that version of me can live in my memories <laughs> and the people who knew me at the time, um, and I don't have that following me around. You know, at the same time, like, could have built a really nice audience if I would have started posting titty pics back then, but no, I'm really grateful. My career has been very divinely guided in a sense. How do you feel about girls who get into uh, porn at 18? Do you think it's too young? Do you think it depends on the person? I think it totally depends on the person. I feel like it's really beneficial to have life experience before you get into porn, regardless of your age. You know, like I feel like it's could be hard for someone who's just really sheltered and is thrown into this world. Um, that's what I would kind of not recommend. I'd just say like, Live some life within a world, you know, like yeah, flip, I remember, flip some burgers, like do, yeah. do something else first for at least like a year or two. Yeah, I remember Lena Lopez came on and she said that she thinks that everybody should have like a nine to five before they get into porn, like a, a regular job where you like clock in, where you're like responsible, you know, or you get fired or, you know what I mean? Like all like the, just the little things that, because porn is sort of like a, a weird well, it's not sort of a weird job. It is a weird job, right? And it's different because like, it's not a nine to five. And, you know, sometimes you can be irresponsible and cancel and still get work. So it's like, it's kind of, it's not a great place to like teach you lessons about responsibility necessarily if you have like no experience with that previously. You know, you come right out of high school and never had a job and then like you jump into porn. I think I think there's something to that. 
Yeah, I think it's really important to have something else that gives you some sort of like structure and routine and you have that sort of sense of like what the world is like to go off of. Because especially because like in porn, we're, you know, acting out what happens in the real world, quote unquote. So it's like you need to have some sort of touchstone. 